Hey, hey, Bula Vanaka. It's Kirsty. I am talking to you from Wurundjeri country in Melbourne, Victoria. Um, it's very smoky here today. I'm sure some of you have heard about the bushfires that are going on. Um, and my dad and my brother have been working on the front lines. Andy has come back for a couple of days off, which is good. Dad is in the office doing kind of head um, logistics and my mum is keeping them all under control. So it's good that they're having a few days reprieve. Um, we're all thinking of everyone who's been impacted by these fires, friends, family and everyone else that we're all connected to. Um, and uh, even if we haven't met. so. Good luck to everybody who's facing those fires and the ongoing aftermath. Um, so meanwhile, a good distraction for me has been working on the first lecture from my Fiji and History course, which I'll be posting up to Thinkific in the next couple of weeks. I think I will do it in bite-sized pieces so that it's cheapish and possibly more um, easier to get. But the first one is going to focus on Fiji's origin stories and there are a few different versions floating around. You'll see that from my Instagram. I've put up a post about Kaunitoni and a few people have put up their thoughts on what it is um, and what they've heard about it. And uh, someone's just posted this morning about a version that they heard around the Carver Bowl, which is so cool. I haven't actually read that one yet. I've got to have a look. But the most comprehensive narrative that I've found is that there was a drawer that came from the West. Some versions say it came from Africa and then it got to the Mamanuthas and there was a massive storm. And on the um, lead boat, Luna Sambosomba, uh, my Australian pronunciation is really bad, sorry about my accent. <laughs> um, he dropped the box, box of blessings that he was carrying. So that's somewhere at the bottom of the sea possibly guarded by two giant clams. Then the landing point seems to have been, there are a few different versions of that too. So Rotuma or Wunda Point. And then Dengo uh, went to the Nakavandra range and set up there further inland and everyone else stayed on the coast. And that's kind of the story that's come through. Um, some people have speculated that it's a missionary story that has been passed down and um, also that Basil Thompson heard this story from his clerk and because he's recorded it in writing that's the story that's stuck. Um, there's um, part of the um, the story too is that it might have originated on bow and then been passed around as a national kind of narrative and there's probably different versions of the foundation stories from Kandavu or Rotuma um, which would be great to know a little bit more about too. Um, yeah so it's really hard to create a one one story for the whole of Fiji because it's so diverse, there's um, linguistic differences and that's part of why people have speculated that it's a Bowen story because of the way that people pronounce Kalutoni. So um, yeah, I'd be really interested to hear what you guys are thinking about it all. Um, I'm really inspired. I ended up starting a painting yesterday because I just can imagine the, the drawer heading over the water and uh, it's a great story to think about and, um, and all the stuff that's come afterwards is so interesting so um yeah i hope that you guys are interested um a few of you have contacted me to ask for certain things to be researched and i am my research strengths are fiji and png and australia's top end so if there's anything from around there that you're interested in that you want to know a bit more about um let me know and i'll do some digging um, I'm juggling, I'll probably end up helping my parents with their um, medical support for the bushfires this week. So I'll be juggling that plus being single mum to two little people. So just bear that in mind, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, but I hope that this has been interesting and I look forward to talking more with you about what I find out.